Alrighty, we've got a Starlink end user terminal, or user device, I don't know what they call it, but I ordered it months ago, probably down there, let me have a look, almost exactly three months ago. So, I've been waiting three months for this, cost $709 Australian up front, and then the plan, I believe, is about $139 per month. It weighs 13 kilos in the box, didn't get the premium one because it's not available yet, but this is meant to give... Uh, what did they say? 100 to 200 megabit and down to 20 milliseconds latency. Now the premium one, which will be a big square thing with more throughput, says uh, 20 to 40 milliseconds, so they're kind of putting higher quality um, uh, assurances or um, class of service on, on it. And they're also saying up to 500 megabit, so the antenna itself has more physical throughput. Now these do use a phased array, which is pretty neat if you look it up. It kind of uses almost standing waves of multiple antennas to angle where it's looking or to follow the satellites across the sky, because there's going to be thousands up there, uh, constantly moving. So the thing itself doesn't physically have to move. Now I believe it does move a little bit to line itself up, and then after that uh, it looks after itself. And for snowy areas, which we don't have here of course, because it's a million degrees in Australia, they do have little heaters built in there apparently, which cats love, but it's meant to melt and dissipate the snow. So, let's open it up and see what we have in here. Box is a little bit dented, but I'm sure that won't affect it. I hope. In a uh, ladderly direction for the reveal. Oh, it's even got... Sorry, right, turning around a lot there, trying to suss out what's going on. Install the app. A sunny day, don't hand. Put it outside, point it at the sky. Plug it into power and your router. There's a cable there. Join the Wi-Fi. So, let's see what happens. Let's see what it looks like. Get that out of the way. I'm going to keep all this packing up because you never know. If, I don't even know if I own this thing or if the 700 bucks is just like their fee and you have to give it back. There she is. Alrighty, so we've got a base. That feels like cast aluminium. We have the user terminal, which is a bit bigger than I expected. As they call it, Dishy McFlatface, that's exactly what it is. The terminal has, looks to be, a long ass cable of some sort. Oh, yeah. The cable is attached straight in there. That's not going to focus too well, is it? So, there's no removing that. Uh, what is it on the other end? But it is just RJ45 shielded there. So you could probably just cut it and recrimp it or whatnot. This, I'd say, is going to be a big-ass PoE injector. Yep, AC adapter, PoE injector. So let's so that out, get this out the way. So that is the PO injector specs there. If come on camera wants to focus. There we go. So long story short, 240 volts in outputs 56 volt 1.6 amps or two of those and 56 volt 0.3 amps or total of 180 watts. That Maybe that's PoE++, I don't actually know enough about PoE++ yet, but will it do math bro? Oh yeah, there you go, oh, I can't angle, there we go, you got a camera, you got it. there you go, you can make sense of that for me. Then we have some sort of router included here. Oh, yeah, of course. So there's two PoE outputs. I'm um, a dumbass. So one goes to the dish, one goes to the router. Uh, they both take 56 volt, whichever PoE standard that is. But of course the router draws a lot less than the dish does. So this is a very basic router. It might be Wi-Fi only. And I'm assuming it's a router, not just a modem. Like this is actually going to be Wi-Fi and NAT and firewalling and whatnot. Um... But it comes with this auxiliary port that's blanked. And you've just got that internet port where you connect it into Dishy McFlatface. Now, 
I assume there's going to be a land port to plug something else into it. You know it, I'm sure as hell going to find out. The MAC address on this doesn't say on the back, but I'm going to assume that they actually have their own OUI and that they make their own hardware. So when we've got it plugged in, we'll double check that MAC address. I'm going to record all of that as well. So I will put a link on the, uh, on the screen or in the description that uh, links to where they officially referenced the end user terminal as Dishy McFlatface, which is better than, you know, the NBN terms of uh, NTD, NTU, and ODU, all of those things. So, let's get a crank and see what she looks like. All right, the cable for this thing is an absolute nightmare. Whoever designed it is clearly fucked somehow. They are, uh, I'll talk more about later. Anyway, it's now plugged in. It turned itself very quickly to point at the sky. I've held it down with three bricks and it's up on my roof on the one flat bit near the gutter. So I'm hoping that works. Join the Wi-Fi though. You immediately get an option to create a Wi-Fi network. So let's call this Starman. And then, what do I mean, stum in. And we're going to go loco, one, two, three, four. Loco, one, two, three, four. All right, you'll now be disconnected. Reconnect with the new network now password. Let's see what that looks like. All right, I joined the new one. And uh, it's rebooting now, it looks like. Wi-Fi is like, uh, no, I don't want to switch. So the first thing I noticed then as well is it's Wi-Fi 5, if you can, as you can see at the top of my phone. Does this app rotate? No. Um, come on, Starlink, you're meant to be the cutting edge. You could do, you know, 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6. That would be so much better. So two major letdowns so far. One is this garbage network cable that it comes with. Don't get me wrong, it's a high quality network cable, but you can't unplug one end of it, which is a stupid design flaw. Uh, the other design flaw, I guess the dish itself isn't too bad. It only weighs about six, seven kilos. It feels like the box was just 13 kilos. Uh, I think this router is pretty crap, but we'll test it out a little bit. And then of course that's going straight in the bin. I'm cutting the cable off and putting my own stuff on. Uh, and that's what I'll do for all my customers too. So we've got maybe 20 customers or so uh, that had these arrive in the last week that we're going to install and we'll be mounting them to the roof, cutting the cable off and running a fresh one through the wall. Um, it is not worth the price of admission to try to deal with this cable and I doubt this router does anything useful at all. If you then plug the aux port, if that's a LAN port, into your own uh, router, you are probably just going to be doing double NAT or something like that. I don't even know if we get a real network IP um, or public IP. It might be CG now, so we'll look at that. But all right, we just went online. Excellent. I was going to say there might be an issue and the issue could be that it's hitting my roof. But let's look outside. No, it hasn't turned far enough to actually collide with my roof. So network statistics. Uptime has just gone to 100% recently. We're getting 67 milliseconds of latency. I don't know where that's to. We'll try out this little speed test though. Uh, while using the app's fine. Yeah, I don't care. Oh, location services. It is on. All right, cool. This app's clearly awesome. I'm bored of that. Uh, what else is there? Network statistics. Oh yeah, it got 241 megabit there. If we run it again, is it actually gonna work? Hey, there we go. Now the thing is, you never know how much is due to the crappy Wi-Fi as well. Uh, like this is um, 802.11ac in a heavily congested area. It's running over a long network cable. It's an unknown quality router. Um, yeah, that's going, that could be the world and probably locally in Australia. Got the one device here, it shows my oppo. Um, 
speed. And that's what we just did. Let's see what sort of um Yeah, come on, I am buddy. You should you should have oh no. It dropped out. Well I don't know what happened there. It uh rebooted, I guess. Stalling is still collecting data on obstructions. It'll normally take 12 hours. Shouldn't be any. It's clear as all hell up there. I'll stick up a photo hopefully. What settings we got? Can we uh can we make it better? We're gonna try a real speed test. Cool, 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 cool. This is that's awesome. Oh, all right. Melt configuration, don't care. Stow. Okay, so that's when it so when it first booted up, it went from a flat configuration to a point at the sky configuration. Stow must just move it back down. That's pretty cool. Factory reset, another styling advance. What do we got here? All right, firmware, uptime, device ID, version, debug data. Ooh, what's in that? Here we go. What do we got? Build data timestamp, feature list. I don't know, it's running some sort of Android that makes a degree. Oh, no, that's my phone. <laughs> um, I don't care about the dip. There we go, dish. Reachable dish, cloud, false features, timestamp. Device info. Interesting. Device state. No events there. Some GPS stats. Okay. It's showing a bit of capacity there. Um, down like 100. What's that? Just for a second. Okay. Now that doesn't make any sense. Um, Point of presence ping latency 70 milliseconds to wherever our pop is. I'm not sure if they've got one in Australia yet, but that's good to know. And there's some uh, router details here. Okay. Nothing hugely interesting there. Um, let's see if it wants to give me my settings yet. Bypass Starlink Wi-Fi router. That's the one I want to test out. Uh, and I'll turn on WPA and I'll probably turn off 5 gig if that has an option. Ooh. So this bypass theoretically is either going to put it in bridge mode or uh, change the dish. Great. No, I can't be bothered with that. It's going to change the dish to just work directly. Now I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see what a actual speed test looks like. Hey. It got it, and it's using the per a Perth pop apparently, or at least, at least it's routing advertising the IP address in Perth. Decent. Solid. Oh, customers are going to love this. Now the uplink speed is always going to be lower in this case from what I understand because it really is limited by the dish's ability to output and follow something through the sky. So that was bloody great. I'm all in all pretty happy with that as far as general use goes. It's better than fixed wireless, I'd say. It's better than uh, sky muster. So this is even, you know, with some loss. Here we get uh, apparently 1,100 seconds out of 1,400, uh, sorry, 1,100 minutes out of 1,000. 144 minutes, is that right? Do I mean seconds? Per day? Anyway, we get 90 something percent coverage, which is still better than a lot of NBN services in regional Australia. Um, that latency is way better than satellite NBN, even business satellite, BSS. Uh, that speed is better than both. Theoretically unlimited data, I believe, which is uh, better than satellite. And you know, fixed wireless plus is 75 by 10, I think it is. And your SLA is that you get up to 75 megabits at least once every 24 hours. So this, of course, doesn't compare with fiber to the node, fiber to the curb, fiber to the basement, or fiber to the premises, but it does seem to slap both fixed wireless and uh, SkyMaster or NBN satellite. So 139 bucks a month is a bit steeper than others, but so far, so good. I'm gonna connect it to the router now and do some more tests on my computer just by piping some specific data over this connection. Um, I've got a Cisco router so I can specify what goes where and we'll see how it pans out.
All right, so now we are looking at a computer that is wired into a router as a Cisco Meraki router, and only this computer is actually going through the Starlink connection. Everything else is isolated. Uh, this computer is not doing any updates or anything. It's very basic. I use it just for Netflix, and you can see it's got some Starlink. So let's see where it goes. It's odd that it's picked up Sydney, but I might change that server and see if we get a better connection to Perth. Let's just do this test first. 79 milliseconds isn't bad. 160 something megabits nice. Nearly hit 170 there. Oh, it's kind of sitting. No, it's sitting over 100. And they say 100 to 200. So this is where we're in expectation. They say uh, up to 20 milliseconds. So 79 milliseconds. Tell you what though, Australia is, you know, not great for internet. And it's huge. So 79 milliseconds is good in general. Now this upload is already way better than using the Wi-Fi. Um, I would say the router that it comes with is pretty poor. And oh, thanks, ads, yay! Why is that not turned on? Uh, and the cable's probably pretty poor. And lack of WA point of presence. Like, don't get me wrong. This is cannot pick what I want. Uh, lack of a WA point of presence isn't ideal, but it's of course no deal breaker uh, because it's still better than fixed wireless and many other things like that. So let's see what sort of ping it gets to Perth. Yep, 123 is not bad. It's five to seven times better than Skymaster on the NBN network. I'm actually getting even better speeds this time, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's not as good as fixed wireless ping. You'll get you know, 30, 40 millisecond ping, but I would assume there'll be a WA point of presence at some point uh, for SpaceX, and there will also be uh, more satellites up there, which means it's going to overall improve. Now, if this was Starlink Premium, would be getting 20 to 40 milliseconds ping, they say, and in the kind of 200 to 500 megabit range. But this... This is brilliant. Um, this is better than my everyday internet. So to give you an idea, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go and change it now, but my everyday internet has a twice better, three times better ping than that. I get about 30, 40 milliseconds, but I only get about 89 down and 35 up. So I'm now gonna monitor this over maybe a week. I'm gonna leave it doing uh, a ping test every minute to a number of different endpoints. I'm gonna be pinging my default gateway for this IP address. And I'll also be picking Cloudflare uh, because they have points of presence everywhere and monitoring the latency and the outages. And I might do a second video on that. However, in summary, the dish is pretty awesome. Got to give it that. Whoever designed the cable is an idiot. I don't even care if it's Elon Musk. It is not suitable for commercial deployment. So the first thing I'd recommend you do is cut the cable off and fix that shit up. Uh, the router is crap. Uh, the fact that it's only Wi-Fi 5 and it's very limited configuration, I'll say honestly just chuck it in the bin. It's not worth reselling. It's of no use to anyone. Ideally, if you pay less than 700 bucks and not get that crap with it, awesome. It's fucking stupid. I am curious who actually made it. I didn't look up the OUI, but it's bound to be registered to Starlink because that's how they do. Now, I saw that option before to bypass the router. That looks like a Starlink premium feature. So you have to enable that bypass mode with the premium outdoor unit or ODU if you want to call it in NBN terms. For now, the service so far seems good. If I get 1100 minutes out of the day from it, I'll be very happy. If it stays under 150 milliseconds ping, I'll be very happy. If I get over 100 by 30 consistently, I'll be very happy. If I get less than that, I'll still actually be happy. This is, this is good. The hardware implementation so far, the cable, the router, it's crap. Dish is great, phased array, snow melting, easy to install, quiet light. That's all good. The rest, room for improve, folks. Um, it's obviously not really designed for business use. It's still probably in beta. I, I imagine they'll nut out these things like the crappy route and the crappy cable when it comes out of beta. But in a commercial setting, of course, you wouldn't use these things anyway. So, so far, so good. I hope this gives you a bit of insight. I'm certainly going to keep tinkering with this. And for now, enjoy. If you haven't already, like and subscribe. Let me know if you want more techie stuff like this. Let me know if you want more stuff like the four-wheel driving video that I haven't put out yet or, or might have put out yet. And your comments are always appreciated. Take it easy.